Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Raymond Canilao. I am, uh, I am the son of Fidel Sosimo Yung Canilao. My dad served as a staff sergeant in the 41st Division. If um, there's a commonality between me and uh, Tita Cecilia Gerlan, both of our fathers served under the 41st Division in the leadership of uh, Brigadier General Vicente Lim. As far as I believe, they are the defenders of the Abukai line. Um, I've been asked here to speak as far as my dad's uh, guerrilla activities. Um, after fighting and the surrender, dad did the death march. And um, when, he, uh, when he got home, of course they were all skinny, they're very skinny and uh, he was stricken with malaria. Um, his mother didn't even recognize him. Well, anyways, um, once he got the clearance by the doctors that he was fine, uh, I would um, think that's probably several weeks or months. Um, my father became a part of um, Major Robert Latham's um, LGAF, the 320, uh, 20th Squadron. If you'd permit me, this is part of his war records as requested in uh, Missouri War Department. This is part of his records uh, as um, war vet. I will read this affidavit signed by Major Emilio Hernandez that I know personally T. Sergeant Fidel Sosimo Canila that he was an officer in the rank of second lieutenant under my command, whose assignment was tentatively personal adjutant of the Rainbow Brigade, later or presently known as the regiment LJAF Yusuf F. In the early days in the part of 1943, in southern Bulacan, and in the areas bordering Makabebe, Pampanga, as per authority of Inspector General Major Robert Latham. That though his assignment was personal adjutant, his work was limited while not in the field to intelligence work, propaganda, and organization. That when the trail for the guerrillas became hot, he accepted the position that was offered by the municipality as treasurer of Masantol, Pampanga, to camouflage and screen his underground activities, which action I highly approve, knowing that we will have free access to the office where he was to work. That once in his position, he indulged actively in his, activate, in his activities, giving our outfit information concerning enemy troop movements and shortwave broadcasts to which he was very much devoted. That one time during his incumbency in office, I took him along in the later part of August 1944 to a conference with Major Robert Latham. But failing to meet the latter, I took him instead to Captain Ray Hunt into the hills of San Nicolas, Pangasinan. That after the conference, he delved actively in intelligence work, having received advices and instructions to lay low. For the meanwhile, the time to act openly being inappropriate, that his work resulted in editing a sort of guerrilla newspaper by the name of the tunnel of which I received daily and which he decimated and distributed to the people. That he did a very remarkable job to the outfit and to the town and to the cause. Signed, Captain Major Emilio Hernandez. Um, what I have read 
as far as this document is concerned, and of course I've read all the documents uh, coming from uh, the war records from Missouri. Um, I was I was really wondering. Uh, anyone of you here uh, read the book Ghost Soldiers? I'm from China. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's not just a good book, right? It's a great book. That book was made into a movie. That movie became Great Raid. Kabanutuan Raid. If if you happen to have seen the movie, there was this portion, a very important portion, but it's very short. It was uh, Major Robert Latham mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. gave the intel to mm -hmm. Colonel Musi. Mm -hmm. And this is all about rescuing the Kabanatuan prisoners. Now, I'm not saying my dad was in the firefight, but it's most likely it's the LJF, the 328th Squadron. They were probably the ones that helped the U.S. Rangers that did the rescue. Why am I saying that? There's a particular Captain uh, Eduardo Hoson. Mm. Captain Eduardo Hoson is also an LJF. He was in the governor of the CIA. Uh, he was in the firefight. So most likely, chances are, this guerrilla outfit by Major La Robert Latham um, were the ones who assisted and helped the rescue of those uh, more than 500 uh, Kabanatuan prisoners. Um, finally, I, I have a board here. I made a poster board. It's a story about my father. Uh, this is all in connection of um, um, they're both grandsons. One is my, fa uh, my father's grandson, and the other one's the great grandson of the Brigadier General Vicente Lim himself. Well, anyways, I, uh, probably most of us here have Facebook, right? Right on that bar, search bar, if you type Brigadier General Vicente Lim, all of the informations that were gathered as far as the Brigadier himself, and the 41st Division. You could read a lot of information there. Well, anyway, so um, here's, here's what I got. And if you would permit me to read it, because it is quite, I was shocked. Shocked in a very good sense. Okay, we'll just, I'll just walk it May around I? later. Yeah, yeah, we can hold it. All right. One last thing. After I read this, this is probably the conclusion of my uh, my talk. This was no less written by the great grandson of the Brigadier General Vicente Lim. A picture seventy-two year journey back to a hero's family. Nineteen forty one, more than seventy years ago, in the battlefields of Bataan, Brigadier General Vicente Lim and Fidel Canilao served together in the forty first division. They fought the Japanese, they survived the death march, and continued the fight by joining the underground. Nineteen ninety one. Half a century later, between 1991 and 1999, two boys named Vicente Lim IV and Michael Angelo, Angelo Canilao went to the same grade school, at that time unaware of the connection that preceded their existence. 2003, after four years, of going to different high schools, those two boys did cross paths again at De La Salle University. They took the same course and eventually choose to work on the same team to complete their theses. They would eventually discover that their forefathers had already crossed paths before. In 2011, 
they sent a deport. Decided that the story of the Division 41st, 2000, yes, Division, 41st Division, had to be told through a modern platform. There had to be a way to fulfill the promise of his great grandfather, wh who once said, with all this talk, I sincerely give the credit to my officers and enlisted men. They are the ones who did it all. Mine is only to inspire and lead. When history is written, I will give them all the credit. Their satisfaction is mine to share. This gave birth to the Brigadier General Vicente Limpage. An uncle of Mike, Raymond Canilao, would later stumble upon the page, allowing him to share more information about his father with Vicente IV. Unfortunately, Raymond wasn't able to share any wartime photographs of his father because of, to his knowledge, there was simply none in existence. In 2013, like many others have, Pepito Achicocho, a World War history buff, stumbled upon the General Lim page, allowing him to share more collections of his World War II photographs. Including, a photo, including photos of the men of General Lim's 41st Division. And one of the pictures he will share is of an unidentified staff sergeant of Division's 42nd Infantry Regiment. That identified sergeant, would unidentified sergeant, would later be identified by Raymond as his father, Fidel. No, there's no such thing as coincidence. There is a reason for everything. Like this page, share the stories. Learn about these heroes. See the faces of the men that sacrifice for our sake. Also, you will never know if you would eventually end up helping others find information they would not otherwise have. This is about helping family. This is about making sure that our time will not dim the glory of their deeds. This is about saying thank you to those we owe so much. And what really shook me, the photo was from Time Life magazine collection. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I just stared there and started crying. It's like I saw my youngest brother. The only difference, the photo was taken in 1941. That, that, that ends my speech.